Hey everyone, welcome back to Blue Ridge. Today we're going to discover scrap silver and specifically we're going to look at Standing Liberty Quarters. What exactly can you cherry pick out of the scrap, crappy, just regular bulk material? Um, which is a great question, by the way, because traditionally these are probably the least attractive looking coins in terms of bulk silver. You could always rely on getting a uh, like a Barber Quarter or a earlier Washington Quarter that's a 90% and you'll have a full date, you know, you'll have full features on there uh, that indicate that, you know, you know exactly how old the coin is. Whereas Standing Liberty, the design is such that the date is one of those areas, much like on the Buffalo Nickels, that wears out the quickest because it sits higher uh, as a design feature on a coin. It, it's really annoying, but that's just, you know, that's the way that these were made. Um, the, the die work was really shallow on them. So they can't, you know, it, it wasn't until later on, um, after the inception of the series that the U S men had decided to tweak the design features to make them make the date more offset while the fields are more in -cues. So that way they pop more, but you know, it, even with that slight modification, uh, the coins still wear out, it, you know, when they get to AG or lower, you know, so that poor to fair to about good range, oftentimes you won't have a readable date. So there, there is a couple specific dates that you could cherry pick, uh, in the series. All right. So for example, this is a standard standing Liberty quarter. All right. And you can barely see it, but it's got the three stars. So let's just assume that everything with three stars would be dated 1917 in a type two all the way up to 1930. So that breaks it down. So there are coins that don't have any stars underneath and the Eagle sits a little bit lower on the reverse of the coin. Uh, which indicates that they're going to be either one of two dates. It's either going to be a 1916, which is kind of like the chase coin and uh, cherry picking standards, or it's a 1917 type one. Okay. And uh, that's going to show Lady Liberty with an exposed breast. Okay. Uh, on higher graded examples on these, not so much. Um, so you have your choice of a 1917, 17D, and 17S for a Type 1. So that's where the cherry picking opportunities come when you're looking through these uh, quarters. So these are these are 10 coins that I picked up from my local LCS. Uh, sorry for dropping the coin, but it went dropped onto a wood table, so we're good here. Uh, these, you know, 10 coins. I picked up at uh, four bucks a piece. Um, you know, it's an okay deal, not not the greatest, but for the sake of this video, um, every single coin that I'm going to show you has no readable dates. Okay, just the way as intended. However, you do have exposed mint marks, like on this one. You have an S. You can only imagine what date that could be. It could be a you know a 1917 Type Two S minted coin so here's another one right here with a little bit more features and you can barely read out the last number of the date um it's it's so worn that you really couldn't you know give a good guess on them um looks like there was a strike through right there in the field that's really not substantial enough to uh, warrant a premium. Here's one that's really worn. This is somewhere in that poor to fair condition range. Three stars. Here's another one that's worn slick. Same thing. Three stars on the reverse. Right there. Hey, you know, I'm surprised. The stars really wear out pretty shallow as well. Here's another one right here. Again, the dealer picked these out for me. Um, here's a 40, or here's another one. You can see the stars a little bit better on this example. 
Yeah, there, there's really no fanfare when it comes to these dateless standing liberties because you really can't do anything about them. Uh, this one has a partial date, 1928. And this one is a, it looks like a D. You could see a D under there. So it's a 28 D. All right. So here's the last coin that was found in here. And uh, you could tell right away it's a little bit different from the previous examples. Um, the relief is a little bit different. All right. I saw that and I'm like, ooh, yeah, I got me to say. And you can even tell the difference in the. Uh, uh, the little drapery at the bottom right here comparing the two one goes all the way to the bottom and another one has kind of like a tilted up curl to the um, drapery there all right so right away you know it's two different coins this one is also an S mint right there And no stars under the eagle. As a matter of fact, the eagle sits lower. So right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a super tough 1917S Type 1 that I paid melt for and is worth actually between $15 and $20 in this condition. Um, I'm super stoked about it. And... Again, this is a way that you could go and just kind of cherry pick through silver. I love cherry picking through silver. Between finding BU examples of various different types of coins or just cherry picking some pretty nice one year specific type coins. Um, I, I am on board with that. But anyways, that's an example of how you could cherry pick through scrap standing liberty quarters with great success and finding something that's worth more than $4. Um, oftentimes, you know, it's the small little wins like that that make it all worth it. Uh, I think it's pretty neat that, you know, you can, you can do that out there in um, the hobby. And, uh, you know, it's great. So if you enjoyed today's content, I know I did because uh, I found something neat. Then go ahead and hit like down here. Appreciate it as always. And um, yeah, you guys have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for the next one. Um, a lot of great stuff to talk about, of course. I got a new uh, selection of weed scents that I'm going to go through and share my findings with you. Um, as always, you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon.